Hey, what's up everybody? Hammer Heart Metal Reviews here once again. It is that time of the month, time to talk about my favorite albums that were just released this past month, June 2023. Been a ton of good releases this month. I'm sure there's a ton I have missed. I maybe haven't listen, listened to as many albums as I typically do in a month, just being out of town a lot. But I got loads of black metal for you anyways. It's not to say this list is all black metal, but that's really been the standout genre for me this month. There are still definitely a few others that will sneak in here. I'm going to do a top 15. I will say the first half of this that I'm going through, like maybe from 15 down to like 7 or so, I think are good albums, but maybe not great albums. Like they're albums that... I would still recommend, and I think they're definitely worth listening to, but they're not ones that I'm going to find myself continually going back to. But as I get into the top like five or six here, wow, there are some absolute gems this month that I'm going to be spending so much time with. So without further ado, let's just get into this, my top 15 albums from the month of June. So just cracking the list in in 15th place, I'm going with Project Rowanwolf and their self-titled album. So if you haven't heard this band before, I believe this is their third full length, if I'm not mistaken. It's kind of a mix of power metal and thrash metal. Got that typical US sound to it. It does feature the former guitar player from Judicator. So you kind of know the style of riffs that you're getting here, and it's full of tasty riffs. I will say, as a whole, I don't know as this is super standout compared to other albums in the genre, but I still enjoy it. The vocals are decent, but not outstanding. Like, it's a very good album, but I can't, like, I can't give it higher marks than that. It's not outstanding, but it's good. It's enjoyable. Definitely worth checking out, even just to have a little bit of fun listening to. Go check out Project Rowan Wolf if you have not. Up next in 14th, I'm going with Creeping Death and the album Boundless Domain. So this is basically straight ahead death metal, definitely with a hint of some hardcore in there, which to me personally, I see the word hardcore in like a band label and that turns me off immediately. That's not a style of music that I typically gravitate towards. It's not something I enjoy, but here it's kind of not too much in the forefront. Like you get those elements here and there, but this is definitely more on the death metal side. Once again, like, this album is getting a ton of praise. I don't really get it, to be honest. To, like, I get the album. I don't get the amount of praise that it's getting. I think it's good, but it's not really reinventing the wheel here or anything. There's definitely a ton of headbangable riffs, and it is a lot of fun. But to say this is, like, an amazing death metal album, no, I don't think so. Is it worth listening to? Yes. Is it fun? Yes. Would this be a good live band? I imagine they would. I have not seen them. But do I see myself returning to this album over and over? No, I don't. Definitely still go give it a listen. It's a fun slab of death metal, but I can't say much more than that. That's about all I think of it. Up next in 13th, I'm going with Witch Hazel and their album Four Sacrament. So this is something that is definitely not something that would be music that I gravitate towards too much. This is Christian-based hard rock with the touch of like classic heavy metal. Definitely not my thing. I read that description and it sounds like I would not even want to listen to this at all. But then I did listen to it and it is full of great guitar riffs. The vocals are pretty decent. Yeah, I'm not really going to dive into the lyrics from like that standpoint. I don't need to listen to stuff like this. That's just not what I'm about. But all that aside, there's some pretty catchy guitar licks and hooks here. It's a pretty enjoyable album. Once again, I don't think it's something I'm going to listen to a ton. But if this is your thing, I'm sure it probably doesn't get better than this for Christian hard rock. So go give it a listen if you enjoy that kind of stuff. All right, let's get into some better stuff now. In in number 12, I'm going with Sacre Noir with their album Comme de Ravena Parmi les Ruins. Probably mispronouncing that, so I apologize. This is the debut full length. This band is from Quebec, plays like Quebecois style black metal, features Monarch as well as Athros from Fortress. So they're kind of combining to create something that sounds exactly like it would, like you would expect from Monarch and Fortress coming together. It's just Quebecois style black metal done really well, full of great riffs, raspy vocals, blasting drums really solid stuff maybe it's not like knocking my socks off with originality it sounds like stuff i've heard before but nonetheless it's very enjoyable solid album that i need to spend more time with in a number 12. 
All right, let's switch it up completely for number 11 and go with Glory Hammer with their album Return to the Kingdom of Fight. So a band that probably needs no introduction. This is very cheesy, over-the-top power metal. This band is from Scotland, of course, features members from Ailstorm. Um, they had gone through some changes here, lost their original lead vocalist, though they kicked him out of the band. He started his own band, so now they got a replacement singer who, to be honest, is decent, but I don't think he's as good as the previous singer. I don't think this album stacks up to their best, but it is just a solid slab of cheesy fun power metal. If that's all you're looking for, it delivers on that front for sure. There's still good solos, catchy songs that'll stick in your head. It's a lot of fun. It's stupid. It's cheesy. I can't put it higher than this because it's just like, it's not that good of an album, but it is just a fun, cheesy time. And uh, it's still enjoyable. I still like it. It's in a number 11. All right, now let's get into the top 10, my 10 favorite albums from the month of June. So coming in 10th, a band that I'm surely to mispronounce, Dejiwo, with their album Salvan Taka. Probably mispronouncing all of that. This is some black metal from Indonesia. It brings in a lot of like traditional Indonesian folk instrumentation in parts. So it really adds to the uniqueness and kind of overall charm of the album. And all in all, this is a very enjoyable black metal album. It, that little bit of uniqueness adds a little something different. I don't hear too many black metal bands from Indonesia. So bringing in that little folky bit to it brings it like adds a notch to it, adds some different atmosphere that maybe you're not getting with a typical black metal album. All in all, definitely recommend going to check this one out if you have not heard it. Sticking with black metal in number nine, I'm going with Necrofire and their album Burning Shadows in the Southern Night. So this is more on the melodic side of black metal. This band is from USA. When I listen to this album, I get a major like early Dark Fortress vibe to this. So if you heard like the first couple Dark Fortress albums, it's in that style. Obviously a big influence from the Swedish melodic black metal scene as well with bands like Sacramentum, Dissection, stuff in that vein. If you like those bands, I'm sure you will get some enjoyment out of this album. It's catchy riffs, melodic black metal done right, really solid album through and through. Go check out Necrofire if you have not. Up next in eighth, I'm going with Arcona and their album Cobb. This is a Russian band that plays a very unique blend of like pagan metal, folk metal, black metal. These later years, they've actually gone in a more black metal direction, but it still has the great mix of these different styles and different like inspirations in their sound. There's different types of songs. They're so like, yeah, you've got a very dark black metal style sounding song, but then you've got a really folky pagan chanting type of song like the vocalist she does she's gorgeous clean singing as well as nice screaming as well if you've heard the band before you kind of know what to expect but this one delivers on all fronts very solid album definitely go check out this new arcona if you have not up next in seventh going with thy cat falc and their album alfold so this is some avant-garde metal very hard band to describe to be honest, I've never been like a huge fan of this band. They're almost too weird for me, I guess you could say, like too avant-garde for their own good. I still have liked moments on albums, but to like listen to their whole discography all in a row, that's not really for me. But that being said, this is still really well done. It's enjoyable, ton of different influences and styles jammed together. Like, I do enjoy it. Maybe it's a little bit too much off the beaten path for what I typically want to listen to. I don't know as I'm going to go back to this a ton, but it's very interesting. It's engaging. Definitely worth checking out. I don't want this to sound too negative. Maybe it's just me personally. I like some different kinds of stuff. This one is doesn't necessarily check all the boxes of stuff that I'm looking for, but it's a pretty decent album in seventh place. All right, as I said at the beginning, the ones I just listened to, I think are pretty good, but not great. But now these next six albums, they're fucking great. So go check these ones out. If like maybe it sounded like I wasn't being that pumped up about those first albums I was talking about. But from here on out, I love every single goddamn one of these next six albums. So go check these out. Let's get it going. In, in number six, I'm going with Shooter and their new album, Helviger. So this is just some straight up aggressive Norwegian black metal done right. Exactly what you have come to expect from this band. And they do not disappoint here. Like this is just an in your face aggressive album blasting all the way through. Just in your face black metal. It's so awesome. It's so relentless. Just a black metal attack. 
exactly what I want in this style of black metal. And wow, solid, solid stuff. If you have not heard this album, do yourself a favor and go check it out because I am sure you will love it. All right, now we're into the top five. This is actually where it got really tough to order these, to rank them. I'm sure even in another month, my order of these top five will change. Come year end time, the order of these will probably change. This is very difficult. These are all neck and neck. So even when I'm putting fifth, could end up being number one, could end up being number two. Like any of these could swap spots. But let's see what I've got them in today. Coming in fifth, I'm going with None and the new album Inevitable. So this is some atmospheric black metal, depressive black metal from the USA. Really creates these bleak soundscapes that you just get sucked into. It's so depressing, but at the same time, I do feel a little bit uplifted listening to this as well. Although it like sags down on you and brings you down, it does show some hope. And like the fact that these band members, I, like there's not really any info about who's in this band, so I have no idea, but... The fact that they write such emotional music, like it brings out different feelings in you and it's just so well done. Like every album they've released is solid and this one is no exception. Definitely go check out None if you're into some heavy depressive black metal that is just going to take you on an emotional journey. Strap yourself in. It's a ride worth taking. Go listen to the new None. All right, up next in fourth, let's go with some more Canadian content with Fanti Faxaf and the new album Hive Mind Narcosis. Putting this in fourth place seems like a fucking crime because this album is insanely good. It's very weird. This is some avant-garde black metal. This band is from Toronto. I absolutely love their last full length and it's been quite a while since that came out. And this one, while wow, I have been listening to it pretty non-stop, it's very strange. There's dissonant parts. There's even sections where it doesn't really sound like black metal at all. They bring in these different influences and just make it their own. Like you hear one song, you're like, that's Fanti Faxas. It just sounds like them. They've created their own unique identity and sound. And it's so well done. Yes, it's out there. It's different. It's strange, but it works. It works so well. Front to back, this album is amazing. Like I said, putting in fourth seems like a crime, but that's just where it is today. We'll see where it ends up later on in the year. But definitely go check it out if you have not. All right, three more to go. Up next in third, sticking with black metal, a band that I never can pronounce properly, or Passaisme, or Passaisme, with their new album, Alternance. So this is some melodic black metal from Russia, but the name is French. They, I think they sing in English. But this is just amazing riffs on display. It is so frantic and melodic. It's got that like medieval style of black metal riffing that has become popular in recent years with bands like Vehemence, of course, uh, Pesta Noir, things in that vein. This is on Antique Records, who releases some of the best black metal out there, in my opinion. And this band suits being on that label perfectly. It's that style. It's got that aesthetic. And I love their debut, but that being said, the vocals I felt like could use some improvement. And I found that they did improve here on this album. It's not as abrasive, but it's still very rough vocals over top of these crazy, frantic, melodic riffs. And it just the combination works so well. These riffs are going to stick in your head. It changes on a dime. Absolutely amazing stuff here. Another one that could easily rise even higher. Definitely go check out this band and check out their new album if you have not. All right, two more to go. Up next in second, I'm going with the album that I did a full review of, and that is Saturnus with their new album, The Storm Within. So taking a break from the black metal, this is more on the doom side. This is doom death metal. I did a full review, like I said, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. This band is from Denmark. It's been a long time since their previous record. Um, they've only put out five albums to date, and this one honestly stacks up there with some of their best material of all time. It's crushing, it's so heavy, but it's got these like introspective moments as well. So emotional. I'm using that word a lot throughout this video, but maybe that's just the kind of albums that have been coming out this month and what I've been drawn to. But wow, this is a great slab of doom metal here. Definitely go check it out if you have not. Go check out my full review for a more in-depth analysis on it. But for today, it's in at number two. And that just leaves one. My favorite album from the month of June is Miserere Luminous with their new album, Orderly. So if you've not heard this band before, this is a collaboration between two other great Quebecois bands, Gris or Gris and Sombre Foray. 
and they put out one album, I don't know, 14, 15 years ago. I thought that was just a one-off project, a collaboration, and that was absolutely amazing. Really had this like cinematic feel to it, just atmospheric black metal with these post-metal parts and just bringing it together into something that's so hauntingly beautiful. So now that we get a new album from them, best news I could have possibly asked for. And this one does not disappoint. If you like the previous album, you will love this. If you've never heard them before, go check out both. But wow, this just has so many amazing riffs. The vocals are so tortured. The atmospheres and emotions created here are off the charts. This is just beautiful black metal, if that makes sense. Like, yes, it sounds raw and it sounds like tortured, but it's beautiful at the same time. And just the way that they can combine these to make these luscious soundscapes not too many bands do it better than this. I was so pumped that they released another album. And to say that it met my expectations would be an understatement. It met them and exceeded them. Absolutely amazing album that I strongly suggest you go check out. All these albums that I just mentioned. This one I think is the best of a bunch. Which is saying something because some of these albums kicked a lot of ass this month. But yeah, Misera Luminous is in my number one spot. So anyways, these are just my thoughts and opinions as usual. Definitely give me your picks down below. Let me know which albums I missed, as I'm sure I just didn't even listen to some as well. And until next time, Hammerheart Mail Reviews, out.